Hey everybody and welcome to this edition of 15 Minutes With. I'm Joe Tommaso and I'll be hosting this segment. Most of you guys listening to this podcast have most likely watched the Netflix docuseries Making a Murderer. The show is based on the wrongful conviction of Stephen Avery. Stephen was convicted of a rape he did not commit. He was released from prison in 2003 when he was cleared by DNA evidence which did not exist at the time of his earlier conviction. Avery sued Manitowoc County for $36 million and the case was later settled for about $400,000. Two years after being released from prison, Stephen Avery would again be arrested, this time for the brutal rape and murder of Teresa Hallback. His nephew, 16-year-old Brendan Dassey, who was originally Stephen's alibi, was repeatedly questioned and fed information by seasoned investigators. They would ask Brendan questions over and over, and over again, until he gave them what they wanted to hear, and then Brendan was promptly arrested as a co-conspirator. Brendan Dassey is now a 30-year-old man who is currently serving a life sentence at the Oshkosh Correctional Facility in Wisconsin. He has served almost half of his life incarcerated for a crime he did not commit. But wait, he had to have committed the crime, right? I mean... He confessed, so he's guilty. Wrong. Brendan simply told the detectives what they wanted to hear so that the interrogation would end. Brendan Dassey was a special education student. He needed an aide to sit next to him in class and explain what his teachers were trying to teach him. When Brendan was asked how Teresa Hallback passed away, he kept getting the manner of death wrong. So the nice detectives guided him in the right direction. Brendan's so-called confession is a false confession. It was also coerced so bad that an appeals court actually ordered it to get thrown out. Brendan's so-called confession was extracted using a technique designed by John Reed. Reed was a polygraph expert and a former Chicago police officer. While Reed's firm teaches this technique to police officers throughout the United States, and the company claims an 85% accuracy rate, it's very controversial and is blamed for many such false confessions. Officers are taught that a person is guilty of a crime simply because they responded to a question by saying, I didn't do it, instead of I did not do it. So much for proper English. We also need to remember that police brought Brendan in for questioning on four separate occasions. This borderline intellectually deficient student was not allowed a parent or an attorney to so much as sit with him during any of these interrogation sessions. In fact, when police got what they wanted, they told Brendan's mom he had confessed and let her finally have contact with her son. His mom's first words, did you do it, were met with Brendan recanting and saying, Not really. They got in my head. Without a doubt, these officers were watching and listening because as soon as these words were uttered, officers came right back in the room and Mom and Brendan were separated. Manitowoc, like magic, finds evidence nobody else finds. After multiple searches... Not even six hours after Teresa Hallbeck is reported missing, Stephen Avery is named a murder suspect. At that time, it was a missing person case. Then there's the whole Colburn running the RAV4 plate number and the RAV4 impound paperwork dated November 3rd. If the RAV was in impound, how did it get to the Avery property for two searchers who just happened to show up to search and who happened to get issued a camera? These same two searchers who happen across the RAV within 30 minutes. I'll tell you what I think. I think Manitowoc fudged Stevens' original conviction. I think they were getting taken to the cleaners for that screw up. The only way out was to put Stephen back in prison. This way, he'd go away. And poor Brendan, he was swept up in this. Manitowoc, you keep saying Netflix left out evidence. Put your money where your mouth is and send the entire case file labs photos everything to us at 15 minutes with p 
P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut, 06516. Let us see the evidence. If there's evidence out there that is not made public, we'll make it public for you. Otherwise, put your money where your mouth is. Last but not least, a message to Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. Brendan Dassey is innocent, sir. It's time that he goes home. Thanks for listening to 15 Minutes with I'm Joe Tommaso. Looking for you next time.